So hi, and thanks for waking up so early. It's great to be the one who is opening this. <clears throat> um, so um, from, uh, from my position of CEO of uh, one of now most visible uh, uh, consulting agencies in past two years, um, I'm concluding this um, critical image on the publishing uh, nowadays. We are working closely with uh, more than 100 publishers worldwide from Japan to US and scaling between like Indie to AAA. Um, we operate many internal data and that helps us to shape uh, our view on what's happening. Um, and this, this talk um, is, um, is uh, focusing mainly on AA market because that's the market that is um, being uh, now uh, <coughs> harmed the most significantly, I would say. So just very briefly, um, I'm in industry from 2001. Um, I was uh, leading uh, different studios as a lead game designer, uh, uh, later uh, the, the exec producer uh, for Activision Sony uh, Play On. Um, and um, besides that, for past 13 years, I'm also doing consulting for some publishers. Um, lately, like two years ago, um, I started this as a full-scale business, started consult uh, CyberSoul Consulting, and uh, we help uh, different publishers uh, and uh, studios worldwide to find the right publisher, to shape up their ideas so they fit into publishers' portfolios. Uh, but we also help with investments uh, portfolio creations, uh, some restructurizations, and so on. <coughs> In numbers, as I said, we are working with more than 100 publishers and investors, um, and under our roof we have now over 30 games um, as our clients, with, uh, with which we are working uh, for many months, and those games are uh, in very different um, uh, very different uh, uh, scales, as you can see, from like uh, 200k to 35 million um, euro. Uh, we are focusing mainly or purely on uh, PC and console games and premium games. Um, now a bit of personal story why I'm uh, also curious in uh, the current AA situation, AA market situation. As I said, I was uh, leading teams uh, during my career, and uh, in like from 2010, I was leading eight AA game projects, um, or I was significant like key person in them. For example, some of Kabbalah's uh, hunting series projects, um, then uh, two projects for Sony XDev, Frantics. And Chim Party, and uh, the latest one was the last Oricru for Koch Media uh, or Play On nowadays. Um, <clears throat> I, I really love this space of double A because um, you can still keep your creativity. Uh, your games needs to be still uh, competitive in unique selling points, uh, uh, and and you have relatively compact small teams. So. Even though game making is not democracy and it cannot be a democratic process, uh, but still everyone from the team can have their voice uh, <coughs> in the development and, and the, the creative process and brainstormings are quite nice. And uh, on the other hand, um, uh, it, is, it was uh, always very stable. Uh, I did very good business or companies I worked for. Uh, or partially my companies were very successful doing double A games um, because uh, it was very predictable. It's not like indie, which is usually kind of lottery to some extent, um, but but you can still make in um, uh, like 10 years eight games, so you can try different genres, different uh, different uh, ideas. Uh, so I really love this space and. <coughs> um, Interestingly, the latest game um, I, I was working on, which I really um, focused, like I, I put all my know-how into that, all my contacts. Uh, the latest game, The Last Oracle, was the least successful out of all. Uh, and that, um, 
for me was also start of the cyber sale consulting because then I, I decided that I don't want to drive uh, 50 plus people anymore and spend three years on or, or two or some years on, on, on one title uh, if the, the result cannot be affected only from the studio but has some specific things that affects that, I will come to that. So that was for me a start of the full-scale consulting agency, but also um, I'm, th I'm still thinking like why this is happening with double A space, because that was not case of our game only, it was not fault of our game, it's, uh, it's the entire double A space problem. Um, <coughs> first, uh, also let's define what we call um, Double A, because I think many pl uh, many people have problem defining the line between indie and double A or double A and triple A. So from our point of view, we uh, consider double A as project between two and fifteen million, roughly, of the development budget. Uh, that is uh, usually represented by publisher. Um, that is less audiovisually abstract, let's say. Uh, more polished uh, visually, audiovisually, and less experimental also on the gameplay side, but still with clear, unique selling points, as I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, yes, please. Uh, sure, sure. So, so uh, for me, a uh, good example is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the, uh, the Plague Tale 1, that's like double A game from Focus uh, Entertainment. Plague Tale now, second Plague Tale is more towards triple A. Uh, double A would be also, uh, uh, we have actually many examples later on, I can, I can show you. Um, but but uh, usually those first games from studios, uh, like now, the Tempest Rising is a new uh, uh, strategy game that is coming up from Slipgate or games like that. Games uh, that are, um, as I said, around like 10 million budget. Um, if, if from Poland, I'm thinking because uh, my clients, I don't have any AA clients in Poland, to be perfectly honest. Um, but let's say one of my clients is Metamorphosis, um, and that's... Um, Lower and double A, I would say, in this in this sense. So that that might be also example of that like bottom line where the double A starts. Is it fine? It it's kind of both. It's uh, the game is, uh, and you will see later on. Like usually, studios are going from double A. To AAA later on in their stage, so um, uh, you have usually studios that are becoming AAA studios, but then you have also studios like Slipgate, for example, I've mentioned that are still doing AA games, um, even though they are growing bigger and bigger. They are doing like Phantom Fury, Iron Fury, for example, and that's still AA game. Um, so some studios are keeping their AA um, projects still within their company and working, for example, on AAA uh, as a main project. Um, now, what is the, what is the current uh, market situation? Uh, around COVID, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, investors saw an opportunity to, to invest into games because they, s they saw you know, games still ramping up uh, games still are doing uh, great numbers compared to their other businesses they invested. They're more uh, conservative businesses. So uh, there, there was a significant uplift of investments uh, during uh, COVID time. And uh, that also meant that um, there was way lower uh, quality bar for games that were invested. Um, there was no, uh, or in, in many cases, there was smaller uh, evaluation, um, um, uh, uh, evaluation strategy or experience and so on. So many games uh, around COVID times were invested more than they should be. There was more money spent on them 
uh, even titles that shouldn't be invested at all were invested successfully, and so on. And that leads to now, two years after COVID, when many games that are on the lower bar on the, of the quality are on the market, the market starts to be uh, oversaturated, um, and uh, those investors who invested there see uh, very uh, bad results on their investments, so they are, uh, you know, uh, escaping the gaming again, and that leads to uh, other problems with uh, publishers being um, downsized and layoffs uh, in the teams and so on. So um, we see the main problem uh, in uh, around COVID time when a lot of games without necessary expertise were invested, and and now the market is oversaturated with. Um, uh, the lower quality games. That's also interesting times for us as a consulting company because now we work with many publishing houses, for example, on uh, setting up the additional evaluation rounds from our side, uh, additional expertise, so they feel more safe and also their investors feel uh, less risk. Um, if we look at the, the, the market in numbers, uh, you can see that spent on mobile and consoles uh, and PC uh, in, in billion, uh, billions of dollars uh, were significantly ramped up in 2020. So uh, when the COVID started, um, it was still ramping up a lot uh, 2021. And after COVID, it went down. This, this looks uh, maybe too dr drastic or dramatic. But if you just imagine there is a line through through this, uh, we are fine. It's just it was just very um, very uh, uh, sudden spike, uh, spike uh, in the COVID time. But uh, but we are growing steadily, um, and just those two years were out of out of the the standard growth. Um, if you look at the uh, the market from other perspective. This is uh, from uh, U.S. population who play games. Again, there was like uplift of uh, around 6% uh, of players playing games. Uh, and now we are back on the numbers before COVID. And the same of standard or average hours spent in a game uh, in a week. So we are again back on like 12 to 13 hours per player per week. Um, now, if we look on some predictions, um, there were nearly 10 percent, uh, uh, 10 percent um, uh, increase or incremental increase here, incremental increase uh, uh, before COVID or till the end of COVID. Now it's slowing down, and uh, in the future, we will probably not be on the same uh, same level of the uh, of the of the scaling of the industry, or on, of the scaling of the amount of players coming to the industry, uh, it will probably go to the one third of what it was before. So there is less players coming and will be coming uh, into the into the um, into the PC and console environment on a yearly basis. Now. Um, what is the problem? What is the, the AA problem? Um, and, and what is the, uh, the thing we are going to talk here about uh, now? So there is an overall slow down. We know that. We saw it on those graphs. We know it from everywhere. But it hits AA most. And uh, why, why this is the case? You know, AA was really considered a cash cow uh, from uh, for many years, from many publishers, from the whole Embracer group, but also uh, from publishers like, like Activision Licensing or Minneapolis, I worked with previously, uh, from Sony XDev as well, from many many publishers. Uh, now, very few publishers uh, and aim to the same segment of those two uh, to um, 15 million euro. And why is this the case? Is, is the segment dying, the AA segment? Is it competitive against indie or, or AAA, on the other hand? Um, 
are AA games hard to be marketized or are they hard to sell in general? Let's look at it. So first, what we know is the market struggle. Uh, market struggle is significant. Uh, players aren't buying games now. There is lower purchasing power. And in general, those games like uh, like uh, you know uh, Minecraft or or those like uh, big big games that are for free basically uh, are uh, are significantly taking players away from uh, from uh, uh, the new titles coming coming to the market. Um, there is oversaturation of the market. We discussed that as well because of the COVID. Partially, there is embracer group issue which which is significant for AA space because it was, from my point of view, the most important AA publisher or group that, that uh, affected the AA space most significantly. And in general, there is overall investor, uh, investor uh, downturn. Uh, again, investors are going away from gaming, but uh, investors are more careful on their money uh, in, in general. And there is publishers uh, retreat from this industry. If you look from our numbers, we are working, or we took a look on 100 publishers from the database of publishers we are working with. And in 2022, from those 100 publishers, there was 20 publishers working with AA games within the space I, I described, 2 to 15 million. 75% of them, so 15 publishers out of those 20, were also working in a higher rank of 5 to 15 million. Uh, so you had like 15 publishers in a higher AA rank two years ago. If we take a look on uh, publishers, on the same publishers or on the, on the database of publishers we are working with now, uh, there is only 10 of, the, of them working in AA space. Uh, and only five out of those ten uh, in a in a fifteen to uh, in a five to fifteen million. So there is one third of publishers from fifteen to five operating in that space. Um, I think there are two main issues why this is happening. Um, one is perception issue, and second is marketing issue. Um, and now let's discuss those issues. So perception issue, as we know, and as we discussed previously, players are more picky, um, and uh, there is less less uh, purchase power. Uh, they compare everything, and um, and the perception issue here is that in current situation, double A games are compared to triple A, a lot, um, and. And that's uh, not fair, as we will see from at least developers' point of view. It's not fair, uh, but we also see why it's happening. Um, so if you look at the team size, standard indie team is five to twenty uh, 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 developers, so ten in average. Double uh, A team is sixty uh, in average, and triple A is three hundred in average. Uh, so if you look at, at those absolute numbers, in absolute numbers, the, the difference between AA and Indie is way lower than between AA and AAA. The same if you look at uh, the uh, development budget. In Indie Zone, in this space, the, 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 the average game from, for example, our database is uh, half a million. Uh, for indie, sorry, for double A, it is seven million, and for triple A, it's seventy million. So again, yes, if you look at multiplies, it's different, but um, the, the the absolute numbers are more important, and from absolute numbers, this difference is way uh, way smaller than difference between double A and triple A. Um, so even though we know from budget and team size, AA games are much closer to indie, uh, the, the AA projects are compared to AAA. And why? Uh, the main reason is price. Because uh, the, there is some, some uh, psychological line 
and obviously those double A games are above that line, and that line might be 30, 30 uh, bucks or something like that. But definitely, uh, players uh, if they buy uh, indie game for average fifteen dollars, uh, they are way more, uh, you know, w way less harsh uh, uh, to that game. Uh, if they buy double A game for forty dollars or triple A game for sixty, the difference for them is not that significant. Even though, as we saw, the differences in budgets and everything are way bigger. Um, this, and I think on some future slides we, we will get to it, but this is mainly, again, because there is a publisher involved. So, AA game with publisher and his 50% cut needs to be on uh, 40 bucks, 30, 40 bucks, so developers can make at least the same profit as for indie. Uh, if you look at double A game without publisher, it can be easily those 20 bucks. Um, so publisher in this case, and it, it's not against publishers, you know, but publishers in this case are, because of their costs, because of their investments into the project, um, they are pushing the game over the over the psychological line, uh, where the players don't uh, make differences between double A AA and triple A anymore. Um, now, um, another thing uh, is perception of individuals, indi individual teams versus publishers. Um, if 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 in, uh, if journalists, in influencers, players see the the developer behind the game, they are usually again way more soft uh, and 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 way less uh, less strict and negative in their reactions. Uh, if they uh, see the publishing house uh, in the standard sense, so publishing house that is representing themselves, not the not the developer, um, they are uh, looking at it through the perspective of of the big company, and they don't know if the company or if the team behind the company developing the game is 15 guys or 100 guys team. So um, that's um, current situation with influencers, with with players, and, and definitely uh, one of the uh, one of the biggest problems uh, for the perception uh, issues. Now, if we uh, look at it in summary, uh, indie versus double A. So indie has uh, or double A has more senior teams, dozens of people usually. Uh, it's audiovisually polished, and they work with publisher. Uh, on the AAA side, they have way bigger budgets, way lower creativity per person, because people there are more focused on their jobs only. They don't need to care too much about unique selling points, because they are usually based on big IPs. Uh, they have a huge production values, so they can overwhelm players with uh, huge effects and, and, and cutscenes, and they don't need to care too much about creativity. Um, they have hundreds of people, and they have, and that's very important, they have usually one-to-one -one marketing budgets. We will get to it in second uh, marketing issues, but um, in uh, in uh, AAA market, usually publishers spend the same money on the, on the marketing as on the development. Um, if I just... Uh, Come back to double A. Um, also, the tricky bit is that if influencers, for example, now work with publisher, they ask for way more money, or they don't want to even uh, take that project. If they work with uh, indie, uh, they are way more helpful and uh, help for free sometimes, just for their PR, uh, because they are helping to small developers, which works well for their community. Now, marketing issues. Um, from my point of view, the, the huge difference is, and I, I saw it on, on the last Oracle as well, that it was the first AA game we did that was not sold also as a, as a boxed copy. That was only digitally uh, sold. And um, 
I think AA games are in general uh, often uh, very good or were very good fit for casual audience. That was more um, that was more uh, open to buying just some random game from the shelf with the nice box. Um, and now uh, the core audience, especially on digital markets, uh, work very differently. If you look at, at at your game or at games on the Steam, you know usually if if the game has um, yellow um, uh, yellow mediocre um, uh, customer reviews average, uh, then the game uh, never uh, does well in the sales or in very few cases. So it's very harsh in a, in a sense that the game has to be really polished quality-wise uh, because players, especially core players now, care only about like uh, average reviews and if there is overwhelmingly positive or mostly positive then they look uh, uh, on on the other aspects on the game of the game uh, so marketing matters less nowadays and the quality of the game matters uh, way more um, and uh, and I think uh, the, the casual audience now is a bit lost in this space because they also look at, at reviews but they Sometimes can have uh, great fun with with double A game, but they don't buy it um, just because of those reasons. This is not happening that much on consoles. The the audience there is way uh, uh, more chilled, but on on Steam it is a huge uh, a huge phenomenon. And again, because players react to mass media and adver advertisement, it's not possible for double A game with. Uh, Two million uh, euro budget for uh, for uh, the the marketing. It's not possible to compete with AAA game with 70 million for marketing. Uh, that's that's what uh, we uh, talk about here uh, more in detail. So again, because AA games were usually very uh, cost efficient driven. The standard marketing costs are 20 to 30 percent of the game. So for seven million pro, uh, project, uh, in average, it's 1.4 to uh, to 2.1 million euro. Um, and because standard marketing doesn't work anymore, you can see because again the the, the, the space is overwhelmed and so on. This amount of money uh, is not enough to penetrate the market with the brute force. And on the other hand, because of the representation of the of the of the publishing house, it's harder to make it viral through influencers and so on. So uh, the the overall risk is high that you lose uh, seven plus two million on on the game. Um, now uh, another phenomenon, and that's to your question, is that uh, many double A games. AA studios are now missing on the market. And I think that's reaction of publishers in the past years uh, because uh, they know and they understand they cannot penetrate with brute force the market with only uh, 1.5 whatever million euro for marketing. So they are pushing their projects always. If there is a successful project, they don't leave it in the AA space and they push it to AAA. That was not happening that much before, and again, I was part of that, and we were always trying to scale the budget for 10, 20 percent for the next project, and not like five times more as in those cases. So you can see some examples, specific examples: Kingdom Come, Deliverance, Hellblade. Uh, we have a few Plague Tale, as I said, Wastelands. All those. Projects are pushed more towards triple A, uh, so pu publishers then can spend enough money on marketing and do mass, ma ma mass media marketing uh, in a standard way to protect the game. Um, now, um, I, I saw the similar crisis in 2009, and the outside of that crisis. Uh, what happened? Man, many like publishing houses died in the time, or, s or scaled down as well. And then uh, Steam came up, and the whole self-publishing and indie started over there. And now, 15 years after, I see 
uh, there might be also a significant shift of the market. Um, and now we are asking, what is the future? We have uh, eight hypotheses here. They are not disjunctive. It's not a finalist. And they are also open to discussion. So please, if you have any questions, ideas, uh, yes. Um, yeah, so so we are not, uh, to be to be honest, we are not focused on the on the mobile that much. We obviously uh, we are overwatching that as well uh, and looking at that space, what is happening. Um, but we don't, uh, or I don't think personally uh, that mobile will overtake the global gaming. I think uh, maybe it will be the other way around that mobile gaming will go down a bit as well. Um, so if 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 we look at, or I don't want to go. 20 slides uh, back, but uh, even mobile gaming went down in past two years, and they are having way different uh, challenges with their marketing, with Facebook changing their uh, their strategy for user acquisitions and so on for uh, for that. So um, I, I'm not that aware of what's happening there, but I, I know they are having their own significant challenges as well. And they are not that much uh, aligned with, with those. Um, so first uh, hypothesis is that the future of AA games will be connected with streaming platforms uh, and subscription services. I think you know this space is perfect for AA games, because same as when we were selling the game back in time in Walmart, and those players just bought the, the nice box and tried it home. Um, now they can for free uh, uh, try the game from the streaming service or from from Xbox uh, 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 Game Pass, and and they can try the game and see they have fun with the game, and then they also can bring more players, especially if it's multiplayer game. So uh, streaming services and platforms um, is one of thing where double A market will uh, will be. Um, uh, will be uh, restructured. Another is triple A, uh, sorry, triple I, uh, triple Indie, called triple I initiative. Um, so this might be the shift and how uh, publishers will also try to shift their games, but also uh, solo developers or like uh, independent developers. If they have high quality indie game, which was usually called double A back in times. They will call it rather rather triple I, triple indie, to show that there is a quality. Uh, the game is uh, not just some uh, uh, experimental thing, uh, but uh, but still uh, there is a developer as a front face. So triple uh, indie uh, is something where also part of double I double double A's will end up. Um, another hypothesis is that there will be transformation of publishers, um, and um, and you can see it, for example, on Warhorse. If if I see how how that worked, like Warhorse uh, has own marketing and PR department, and they are they are basically uh, uh, they are showcasing themselves as a front face of of the game. And that work uh, that that works very well for their community, and you can see it on many other titles like Beat Saber that we were helping with as well. Again, the game that end up being bought by Meta, super successful game, but again those developers were front face. And I think now more and more publishers are realizing that, and they are actually trying to motivate developers to become more self-sufficient. Uh, to stay as a front face, uh, and and basically that also will increase the the innovation and diversity of the marketing style because every team will have own ideas and ways how to marketize their games. Uh, and other console generations will boost double A for sure. Again, console is a space where double A is uh, uh, very successful because there is not that harsh audience, there are no player reviews, at least not in this uh, super extensive form as uh, on, on Steam. So I'm sure that with the next console, 
uh, that might be also the significant boost of double A. Another thing, again, where we, when we were selling um, hunting games for Cabela, for example, I know it sounds ridiculous in Europe, but hunting games are quite popular in America, and we were able to sell like one million copies per game, and that was like full uh, like box game uh, in a Walmart front shelves. And on Black Friday, they bought everything, and it was great. And uh, I think you know that's that's also uh, a good example how how um, or or it's 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 a space which was very successful. Then around COVID time, big publishers stopped doing their uh, their box games because um, in a COVID they had thousands uh, and millions of copies locked down somewhere. Um, in, in in some stocks, so they basically stopped doing that, uh, and they were shifting towards the digital market. But now they see by themselves it doesn't work that well for double A. So I think there will be a rebirth of the retail game distribution. Another thing, um, and that's quite important. I see it on my clients or our clients as well, is uh, the automation of uh, or, or using of AI more to automate the process of development. Um, I hear many voices of uh, different developers being scared of like AI will take our jobs away. That I don't think it's going to be the case. I see more AI being. Uh, Similar to what happened with um, uh, with like Unity and Unreal when they came to the market, you didn't need suddenly uh, 50 people to make the game, but 20. And with AI, it's going to be similar. You still need your animator, but you don't need three of them. You still need your concept artist, but you don't need three of them. So there will be more more teams, uh, but the price overall uh, will reduce because of the half of the team size. You don't need to then. Um, uh, you don't need to sell the game for such a big price tag. So I think uh, AI will also help the, 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 the space, and that's connected with, with this hypothesis that uh, the, the price tags will go lower. Also, uh, publishers now realize they need to go lower and below that psychological, psychological uh, uh, line of like 30-ish dollars. And that will also uh, help uh, players to not be that harsh on those games and uh, not give such bad reviews. Um, and obviously, as always, there will be some market uh, purification. Um, some teams will uh, will die. Some publishers will die, um, and uh, and um, smaller teams probably will, will be uh, reborn based on AI as well. Uh, which will cause another market saturation later, but maybe AI will help with that as well. Um, so now recommendations, few recommendations now. Uh, if you're a developer and you're looking for a publisher, um, I definitely recommend you to transform the budget if possible. So you, uh, your budget is rather around one million. If you are, for example, somewhere Closer to two millions. What we are doing with our games often now is to also split the budgets in a in a sense that that uh, your budget uh, is for the basic game, and then th then you have like some episodical approach, DLCs, and so on. So then you you will have way more publishers publishers on the market still who will be able to uh, to fund your game. Uh, if you still are aiming for double A segment of like two to fifteen, let's say. Five, make sure you are creating strong IP so you're not selling to the publisher only that one game because, again, the market is risky, especially in this, uh, in this space. So it's better to sell the whole strong IP, ideally connected with some uh, existing IP. Um, so, um, which is the last point. So uh, you can also look at if, if you don't mind what game is going to be, you just want to create the game with your team, there is multiple free IPs. Publishers can also give you uh, some of them, and uh, that will obviously make the risk way lower on their end. Um, another rec recommendation is to have internal marketing and PR team. 
so again you are is in contact with uh, with influencers uh, even if you have if you have published your your you're the front face you're in the front fr uh, forefront um, and um, and this way again the community will be uh, way uh, calmer and bigger probably and keep an eye on AI trends uh, again to 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 uh, increase the uh, the efficiency of your uh, games and and lower the the budget. Uh, another thing is cut down on time. I think that's super important, especially if you're aiming on PC, uh, Steam. Um, I, I see many developers nowadays still uh, aiming at like 15, 20 hours of gameplay in their AA uh, game, uh, and the quality is what matters, as I as I said on those reviews and everything. So it's still better to make like five to seven uh, hours gameplay with some replayability and rather focus on the quality. And obviously for publishers, recommendation, if you are considering the AA segment, uh, there is currently the most free titles in this category um, uh, in history. So contact us and we can go, go through our selection. Thank you, and we have now a few minutes for your questions, please. Thank you. Uh, so if you have any questions, please join us on the stage. Uh, when, men, when, this is ca when discussing market struggle, we've mentioned two like, reasons for it, and it was lower purchasing, purchasing power and uh, players preferring free-to-play model. Uh, do you have any data on whether the in-game purchases within the free-to-play model lowered as well? Um, we, we, we did have some data, um, uh, but to be honest, I don't remember exactly. But uh, what I, what I uh, do have as a data is amount of players uh, buying new titles per year. And you can see because of the big uh, th three games, you know, like uh, Roblox, uh, Minecraft, and uh, now I forgot the Fortnite. most. Yes, thank you. Fortnite, uh, there is way less players buying new titles every year from the new generation of players. You can see that every like 10 to 15 year old kid is playing Fortnite instead of trying new games as it was 10 years ago. So, so this this is very significant. Um, uh, regarding the uh, the purchases in our purchases, uh, I I don't remember if it lowered or not. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, quick question about recommendations. Uh, you mentioned that m traditional marketing no longer works. What are your thoughts on um, storefront op optimization, like working on your page inside of Steam, discounting strategy and stuff like that? How does that tie into marketing? Yes, uh, so we have uh, some marketing specialists in our team. Uh, that would be more on them, but I, I can tell you definitely that it, it helps a lot. And if, if you have like if you look at the standard uh, again publisher strategy, it was based on sales only mm -hmm. basically. So they they did like for their games long tail only sales, and each had to be same or bigger than the previous one, mm -hmm. and that, that was usually it. So I, I I think if you look at indies, and that's also why uh, those indie games sometimes this way longer lifetime. Uh, you need to be more creative, prepare new small content, c contests, um, uh, you know, uh, streaming. And I, I, I can see many, uh, our clients, but also other, other guys who are doing this on the store, on the Steam, and it works very well. So definitely that's, that's also something where if you're a big publisher uh, with a lot of titles, you don't have time to look at the titles that are that were released three years ago, and think how to still creatively, you know, improve their their sales, and that's what why they need also to push indies or developers to forefront. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, yeah. Also, thank you very much for your speech, and thank I you. would like to ask um, about your personal knowledge and uh, your knowledge about the publishers' likes. Um, there, there is a handful of very specific uh, of AA games that are catering to a very specific audience. I'm talking things like Space Engineers or Terra and Vector. Um, do you think that pitching games, uh, like AA games with higher budgets uh, as those ones, um, to publishers is uh, still a good idea? Like super hyper niche specific ones that are sure um, or are predicted to be sure to find uh, a market? 
A hard question. Like in general, speaking in numbers and, and, and how quickly you can sign the deal, it might not be the best idea necessarily. Because uh, if you come up with like 10 million game for this kind of niche market, even if you argue with things like space engineers, that was very different times, you know, it was basically beginning of early access. They they were in the right time on the right space. So it's hard then to, or maybe maybe not, but it's necessary to find an example, relatively recent example, wh when this worked. Maybe for another niche audience, but still having these like hard numbers examples, having really uh, in-depth analysis, and showing some results. Um, you know, wh showing if if your community is really there interest based on wish lists uh, in higher tens case at least for for such a such a budget uh, so I think without this like uh, just an example now we are closing up deal with one higher scale game that has hundreds of case of wish lists and still it is it takes some time and it's one of the most wish listed game so then if you imagine you have game that has couple of thousands of wish lists aiming at the niche audience that might be quite tricky. So for this I would rather maybe find an investor first and then go with more finished version with really a lot of wish lists and then have some MG, some money uh, up front from the publisher to help only with the publishing thing. So the solution is just to start small and uh, try to kind of uh, measure the waters first? Basically yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir, for inspiring presentation. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you.